Hey everyone. So the other day I had some time and thought I'd get in a live stream to go over how to start building the ML.NET repository so you can start contributing. I initially set this to private to get the audio set up and all that. Unfortunately, I forgot to set it from private to public so no one got to see the live video, uh, all 30 minutes of it. But the good thing is I can make this 30 minute video into probably 10 minutes since there were quite a few silent moments in there. Uh, the video quality may be off a bit since I had to download this from YouTube, but I don't think it's too bad. I think you can see the, uh, at least the screen pretty decently. I'm still learning this live stream stuff and hope to get it down where I can start to do it a bit more regularly, uh, but it's a bit of a work in progress. And feel free to let me know if there's anything else you will want to see during a live stream. I hope you all enjoy the video and can move one step closer to being able to help contribute to the ML.NET code. Hey, what's up everyone? I thought I'd do kind of a live stream here, uh, kind of go over a little bit on how to get started contributing to the ML.NET repository. It's not hard, but it can be a little intimidating there because it, it is such a, a big repository here. So, so we're here on the, the .NET machine learning repository. And first thing, of course, is you want to fork the repository. So I already have it forked. So I go to my fork. And once you, if you haven't forked it before and you and you do it, you're pretty much good to go at that point. Uh, but for me, because I haven't updated my fork and quite a bit behind, so 72 commits behind, I can do this in the command line, but hopefully GitHub can do this for me. Uh, here we go. So it can compare the main fork, uh, the main repository to my fork. And I can, it's like I can create a pull request. So let's do that. Merge from main uh, repository. All right, so there's all that. I'm gonna squash and merge. Just double check. Okay, so it's in mine. All right, so let's go back to my fork here and it should be, all right. I guess we'll go, we'll go with that anyway. Uh, so in here, I don't have it pulled in here. So we can just use a GitHub CLI and kind of get this in here. So documents code GitHub. So I just use the GitHub CLI to, to clone that. This might take a few few minutes here. Okay, so that's that's in there. So we can go into machine learning and here. So let me set I get remote. Add my origin and copy this. We didn't already exist. Remote. We already have that. Okay. We already have that. And so if you have that pulled down, there is a developer guide here and they can help you build on your machine there. So you need Visual Studio 2019. And you need CMake, so you download CMake as well, because that's what it uses for the uh, the command line mostly. Minimum requirements, desktop development, and all these things you can get using the Visual Studio installer. Then we click modify, and then you can uh, make sure you have these items here uh, installed here. If not, uh, just check them all and then install. And these, I think you pretty much get these by default. All right, so in order to fetch dependencies, we need to first use git submodule in it, that the repository. So we do that, get the module in it. There we have that. And now we should be able to just use this build command. We do build and that should build from scratch here. And it downloads everything that we need. So this install might might take a while. While that's going, let's kind of go continue going through here. There are different commands you can add to this build command here. Like you can run a test with the slash tests. Uh, you can build the assemblies from the dash pack. Like you can run tests from Visual Studio. I have done that before, and it works quite well. There are benchmarks, so like performance benchmarks that you can also run, and that's a, in a different. Uh, location in the oh so it's just another 
a performance test uh, command here. All right, so installing some more stuff here. Now, the first time you run this, of course, is going to take a while because it has to install a bunch of dependencies. And it says you need to run the build from the root of the repo before you open in Visual Studio. So you can build this in Visual Studio, but you do need to run this build command first before you can do that. And that's probably because it doesn't have these dependencies yet. There's quite a few dependencies here. I think the main thing is this get submodule kind of trips people up because they're, they're not used to using submodules. I'm not either. I think this is the only time I've ever had to use this submodule command. Documentation here is, is quite good, so they, help, they can help you get you up and running. That and make, making sure you have these the required items here. That's like it's doing some restoring. After the first time you run this, it, it'll be quicker. Actually, while, that, while this is running, for stuff to work on here, it's uh, there's quite a few things you can you can work on. If the things I usually do is I look start looking at some labels. If it's your first time messing with the repository, uh, there's a first a good first issue label that's good to explore. These are usually some some easier things that you can implement to kind of get your feet wet here. Another one, another good one to look at is the up for grabs label. There's a few of them there. It's like they're the same as the first good issue. Uh, actually, I think I have both of these. Yeah. There we go. I got quite a bit more there. Uh, so these are good to kind of start looking at as well. I see there's those. Uh, there's also a documentation label as well. There's a few in here. These are just like updating readme's or uh, code documentation. So these are, are good to get into good easy ones to kind of get into as well yep still going it's, it's i guess restoring all the nuget packages for each of the projects so in this, this stream i'll probably just get this built and then we'll open it in visual studio make sure it builds and then that should be it that sh should get you enough to get get started the next one i'll probably probably hit up this issue and kind of it's, it's a smaller one especially uh, it's kind of two parts here. First is updating the param uh, documentation for the sampling key column. But the second one is see if we can automatically check this in the training test split. So the issue is, for one thing, it's pretty confusing. It, it, if you look at the actual documentation, it still doesn't make too much sense. So the issue was that somebody was using the label, the sampling key column, but Using that will cause all rows with the same label value to be placed together in the same splits. So that, that causes some, some issues when you do the, the training on it. So it'd be good to kind of mention that in the param hover. And these param hovers are generally good. You usually have some good amount of information on those if you want to know what, what a method does. So might mess with that. Not quite sure how to automatically check it in the test train splits, mainly because they mentioned here that the assembly key column and the label aren't in the test train split parameters together. So maybe that we can add that as like an overload. Uh, it looks like the auto ML APIs have both of those. So it might be easier to, to do that first. And then we can kind of do something similar for the test train split. Hopefully I'll get do that on the next live stream. Hopefully this builds and restores at some point. Here we go, download the extra model files. Let's see, I think these are reasonably small files here. And these I think are for tests. I think they can use these for tests. Of course, I say that in this Alex node is taking a while to, to download. It's like 233 megabytes. Oh, another thing also, if you're looking for issues, is that the Microsoft data data analysis projects are now in the machine learning repository. So you can come through here and work on these as well. Some of these might be a bit more complicated. Yeah, float double values don't convert properly with decimals in the CSV. It might be something that's good to add. String data for your column should expose a constructor that doesn't need a length. That might be a good one to, to work on. Index out of range exception. These, these are worth a good look through to see if there's anything that you want to contribute to. Let's see, downloading ResNet. Shouldn't be too much longer. 
And also another thing to contribute to is some of these issues are just kind of questions. I think there was one I did. There's one I did recently that we can look at. Yeah, missing matrix federation trainer. So I saw that. Was, oh, yeah, that was just split out to another NuGet package. So I just mentioned that and the issue got closed. So helping answer questions in these issues could be, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be pretty helpful for the maintainers here so they don't have to go through as many issues themselves. Of course, if you if you run into any issues, definitely uh, post them in the comments or or in the chat if if your buddy's watching here. And now now you know how long it takes the first time. Now you can like grab lunch after you start it, or make coffee, or <laughs> watch a YouTube video. It's like it's doing. So it's using a CMake before. That's so it uses that. And that's why we needed to, to download that as a requirement for this. And there is some C++ code in here. That's why it needs that. So it does that for some, I think some of the models use that, LDA models and, and such. So done building native components. So that's good. No errors. One warning, but that's, that's probably all right. So it might be almost, there we go. So finished. There we go. It took 14, 14 minutes. Most of it was uh, downloading dependencies and restoring packages. But so those succeeded, so that's great. Uh, six warnings, uh, that's all right. And so what we can do now is in our uh, Microsoft.ml solution. So open that. Things here, it's a source. So there's a lot of projects here. But now we should be able to build a solution here. And that should build just fine. So this build shouldn't take, shouldn't take quite as long as it did earlier. So it should just kind of build all the projects and that should be it. That's the thing with doing these things like this live is that you have to wait through all these builds and all that. If I did a video on it, I could just totally cut all this out. So it's almost 30 minutes now. This could have been turned into like a five minute video. So I've got an error here. And I thought it might be a warning set as errors. I don't have a GPU here, so hmm. So I did look a bit further into this error here, and it is a compile warning that's being thrown as an error. And since it's from the sample, the simplest thing to do is to just comment it out and continue with changes that you want to make. Another thing we can do is we go to the project's properties. And in the section where it says treat warnings as errors, we can set that to none, and that fixes that error. Also, a better way to do this may be to uh, hover over this and we can click this link where it gives us the error. And it, we can see it is a compile warning and we can just copy this number here. And back in the project properties and the suppress warnings, we can add another item here and that'll get rid of the error. And note that each of these will modify either the project or the file itself. So be mindful not to commit this change when submitting a pull request. Or if you do submit with these changes, you can bring up a discussion with the team. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see some contributions from y'all. If you do, please put it in the comments so we can all see the cool things you fix or add to the repository.